Welcome to the Money Focus Podcast. I'm your host, Moses the Mentor. And on this episode, I'm excited to welcome Jordan Berry to the show, who's the founder of Laundromat Resource. He's a seasoned owner of multiple laundromats and a commercial real estate agent. He's here to help us understand the laundry business, how to own and operate a laundromat, and the pros and cons of getting into the industry. I'm eager to hear what he has to share, so let's dive in. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Uh, super honored to be on here and look forward to having a good time, uh, ironically, talking laundromats. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> I have a good time talking laundromats. So uh, so I was a uh, I was a pastor for 15 years, youth pastor and a pastor for about 15 years. And, uh, you know, along that time, had a couple kids with my wife. And, you know, at some point when my kids were pretty young, there's just there's a lot of demands on uh, on pastors and you're spending a lot of time, you know, emotional energy, helping people deal with their stuff and, and all that. And it was just time to take a break from vocational ministry, uh, spend some time with the family. And, and so trying to figure out, okay, if I'm not going to do that, what do I, what do I do? And, uh, so I live here in Southern California and we owned our house here and I was like, I've got a great idea. Why don't we rent out our house here in Southern California? And take the money we've got in the bank. Let's go buy a condo on the beach in Hawaii. And uh, until our kids are like school age, then if we want to, we can come back to Southern California and net gain condo on the beach in Hawaii. And I was like, yes, sounds great. So I told my wife about it and she said we could do that or we could buy a laundromat. And uh, I still to this day don't own a house on the beach in Hawaii. Oh, man. I have on laundromats. And uh, the way that that kind of came about is uh, she has a family friend who he was working a, a high paying tech job, but working 70, 80 hours a week. And he bought a laundromat and replaced his tech income and was working five or 10 hours a week. And we heard that and we're like, actually, that sounds, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a fast track to, a condo or a house on the beach in Hawaii, you know? Um, So we decided to go that direction and uh, you know, just, I guess a little teaser. It did not go well for us uh, initially for a little while. And uh, you know, the, the goal was money coming in with very little time investment and it ended up a a losing money for a long time with a whole lot of time investment. So the exact opposite of what we were hoping uh, there, but glad to dig into that too, but I'll pause there. Uh, and let you do your thing. Uh, no, I appreciate it. I mean, since you're already on it, I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm sure we're going to talk about a lot of the pros, but we can flip it up and talk about the opportunities. So what were some of those initial obstacles that you had when you invested in a laundromat? Yeah, so this is a little over a decade ago. And I mean, honestly, I knew nothing about business. I knew nothing about real estate investing. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. Honestly, I'll just shoot straight. I knew nothing about anything really. Uh, so I did not know what I was doing and you know, I did as much research as I could, but like a decade ago, there really wasn't a whole lot of information about how these businesses operate, how to run them, what I needed to know. And so I did as much research as I could, but really what it came down to is I relied almost entirely on somebody who's, who depended on me buying the laundromat in order to make their living, Mm. which was the broker. Right. And it just turned out that the broker that I connected with just did not have my best interest in mind and, uh, you know, sold me something, sold, sold me a dream that was never going to be, you know, come to fruition with that particular laundromat. And so, you know, couple, couple like specifics, right. Is, you know, this laundromat was in a very rough neighborhood. I mean, I literally, uh, I, I don't want to scare people too much. This is not common, but just this is just my story, my experience, right? So don't don't get too scared about this. But I, I literally got in like a gang turf fight. The, right. the previous owner just stopped coming and just did not manage the business whatsoever. And so, so yeah, so I that was part of the problem. Um, the you know the the broker said, hey, look, we're going to come in here, put new machines in. So we really don't need to do any due diligence. We know that it's just breaking even. It's really not making money. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, but it wasn't breaking even. It was losing a couple grand. And then once I purchased wow. new equipment, it, I had 
loan payments to. And, and it turned out it was a lot harder to rehab the reputation of the laundromat than to rehab the laundromat itself. So I mean, those are just some of the things that I just didn't know going in. And I say a lot of times, like if, if me back then could have a 15 minute conversation with me now, mm-hmm. it would have saved me six figures easy, but it, it is what it is. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot going through it and getting in the business that way. And I mean, a, a expensive lessons, but really good yeah. lessons. And yeah, that's, that's essentially how it went down for us early on. <laughs> wow. And I mean, did you ever, you know, get that large amount and into a spot where it was even profitable or did you have to just really just cut your losses and start somewhere else? Yeah, I'll tell you, man, it was, I, we held on to it for, I think eight years. We only sold it like maybe a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. It, I mean, it was a struggle, man. So yeah, we did, we were able to turn it around. I mean, it was never what the broker, I mean, he showed us pie in the sky numbers. It was never going to be that, but you know, got it to where it was a functioning laundromat again and, um, and ran it for a long time that way uh, for that. So, but it, it was, it was hard, man. Like there were so many, I mean, part of the entrepreneur roller coaster, right. Is going through the ups and downs, learning, making mistakes, learning from them, trying not to repeat them. Um, but it was, there were some dark times in there where I wish I would have just kind of cut bait <laughs> and ran. Yeah. <laughs> so before you scare everybody off, <laughs> yes. So now talk to us a little bit about the, the market in itself, you know, like what, what makes owning a large amount, you know, a great investment opportunity, you know, that talk to us about that. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, I've set everybody up now and I'm going to knock it down. <laughs> here, here's the thing is like, I think it should mean something that I'm here advocating laundromat ownership right. after that experience. Right. So I, I don't want to scare anybody off because in, in that process, I saw the powerful potential of laundromats. Right. Mm-hmm. And the thing about laundry and I, and I saw a lot of people around me, you know, succeeding with laundromats and making really good money, almost kind of quietly under the radar. It's a little more above the radar now than it used to be. But even back then, I mean, it was below the radar, but people were doing really well. And the reason for it is that laundromats on, on average return about a 20 to 25% return on your investment. Uh, and that's unleveraged. So that's without a loan. So if you use a loan and appropriately use leverage, that number goes up, you know, sometimes pretty dramatically. And I, you know, I love, I'm a real estate investor as like you, and I love real estate. In fact, probably real estate is my first love. However, most real estate investments can't touch just the average laundromat investment in terms of cash flow. And, and I am a firm believer that both of them work really well together because you get the best of all worlds when you have both. So, I mean, that, that cash flow potential is huge. And then the, you know, the, the laundromats are not passive. They get sold as being passive a lot. They're not passive, but I, the way I look at it is there's a scale of, you know, from completely passive to completely active. And you can heavily weight laundromats on the passive side of that scale to where you're only, you know, you're once you get it set up and running, right. You're only working maybe five, maybe 10 hours a week on your business. So, so, I mean, the, the income potential versus the time commitment necessary makes them very appealing to a lot of people. Yeah. What are, what are some of the, you know, you mentioned five to 10 hours a week. I'm, I'm assuming like once you're at like BAU, you got your system down pack. What are some of the mm-hmm. things that eat up that time? I mean, other than collecting the money, is there <laughs> some other things yeah, yeah. that, you know, you have to really account for? Yeah. Making your TikTok videos of you collecting coins <laughs> and it seems like everybody's doing that now. Uh, no, but yeah. So, I mean, Money management is one of the things, right? And more and more laundromats are going to digital payment systems, um, but still the majority of them are are coin based. Um, so that is definitely one aspect. Uh, depending on how your business is set up, um, you probably have, at the very least, some cleaners to manage. Uh, people cleaning your laundromat. I mean, the the goal is not to be the one cleaning the laundromat, and you know, do yeah. maybe you have to do that for a time sometimes. Um, and that's fine. And even if you do it, and that's your plan. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But the power of them is that you can have other people do that and still do well. Um, so maybe managing employees. 
uh, whether that's a cleaner or attendants that are there part-time or full-time, or if you have the service side of the business, which by the way is booming. So that'd be like drop off laundry where somebody brings our laundry, we do it for you and you come pick it up or pick up and delivery where we go to your house, snag your laundry and deliver it the next day, folded, clean, ready to put away. That side is booming. Um, and obviously that's a little more intensive. So there's a little more management there, but also you can scale it bigger and bring on managers uh, to help you manage that. So managing employees is part of that. You know, your your equipment is your lifeblood, right? So making sure that equipment is taken care of. Some people like to fix it themselves. Some people outsource uh, that and bring in service technicians. So just mind in your business, right? Like doing the basics, making sure everything's clean, making sure everything's working, making sure your employees are following what they should be doing and the way they should be doing it with good attitudes and all that stuff, right? And just the business basics that you're making sure are are happening to keep your business humming along. Nice. And, you know, going back to your, your story, you know, when you had the horror story with your first uh, experience, you said that you had seen some, you know, other people be successful in the business. What about their success made you say, hey, I got to keep going? Like what, what about their, yeah. you know, those conversations and interactions with them said, okay, well, it's light at the end of the, end of the tunnel. Just curious. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, which I will be, uh, <laughs> part of the reason I kept going was cause I didn't know how to get out early on. Right. Cause I was like underwater. I didn't know how to get out. So that was part of it. I don't want to like be some kind of hero over here. Part of it was, I just didn't know what to do. But the other part of it, you know, and talking to these guys is, I, I mean, I saw them making good money and, you know, there's a stat that floats around to this day. I still don't know exactly where it comes from, but you know, laundromats have a 95% success rate. And another part of it was like, I, my, my version of myself in my mind does not jive with me being in the 5% that can't figure out this easy business. Right. <laughs> and so part of it was like, I just, I can't leave until I'm, I get out of that 5%. Like that's not yeah. me and that's not acceptable. Right. So that was part of it too. But, but as I was talking to owners, I mean, I was seeing people who were like, like I said, like, like uh, my wife's family friend who is replacing big incomes with one or two laundromats and, and not putting in a ton of effort. And I realized like, I have now paid a lot of money to learn some very expensive lessons. I can either cut bait and try something different, or I can apply those lessons that I learned and just say, okay, well, I paid for the education. So I might as well, you know, forge ahead. Um, and you know, that's, that's what I decided to do. Um, and again, it took a little while, probably took, two, two plus years for me to hit like a break even point there, but hearing how other people were doing their business and, and, and learning how they were being successful. I felt like, okay, this is, this is doable for me. I can do it. Yeah. No, that's good. I mean, you definitely don't want to be in that 5% if you can help it. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> so. that's exactly right. Well, and that's, that's where like I, you know, eventually I was like, okay, I paid these expensive lessons or paid this money to learn these expensive lessons. I'm going to start sharing it. Right. And that's, that's sort of the heart of the platform. Like a lot of my resources, the platform that I have, it's, we've got a podcast where I interview people because I wish I had that. Right. And we do Q and A's and you know, we've got a YouTube channel and we've got a blog and like all that stuff. Right. But the whole point of that is so people don't have to learn the lessons I learned the way that I learned them. Right. And it, I think it's really created a community in the industry that is more collaborative, more here's my experience. Here's what's working for me. And I just wish I had that when I yep. started up, but it didn't exist yet. So I just built it. <laughs> I mean, thank, thank you for calling that out because, you know, of course you have to vet every program and, you know, figure it out. You know, not everybody has the greatest intentions, but um, the best way to learn is from someone who's done it. <laughs> you know, if you want to go through, yeah, like if you want to go through this and make a six figure uh, mistake or learning bumps along the way, like Jordan did, or would you rather be a part of his program and avoid those six figure mistakes? You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing I always tell people. I, I fortunately I haven't had a six figure mistake in my rental business, but I've definitely had some tens of thousands, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and those are the things that I'm like, okay, well, 
if I can help you with that, if I can get you one step closer than I did, then I'm, I feel good about that. You know, now, you know, if you don't want to make that investment and being part of my program, I mean, have, have at it, you know, but yeah. I promise yeah. you, yeah. I promise you, you're going to run into the same issues I have because you don't have the proper ed- education and it yeah. is just, it's worth it. So people should consider that. Yeah, it totally is. And like, you know, for your program, right. It's like, I, you know, I could, I could try it myself. You know, I'm, I know I'm going to make mistakes. I know, you know, it's stuff that probably pretty easily someone like you or someone in, else in your program could say, Hey, you're about to make a big mistake, do this instead. Right. And it would instantly save me far more than whatever it costs to be in your program. Yep. Uh, right. And so the way I think about it and, and I started doing this myself, I'm, I'm naturally a, a, a DIY guy. Like mm-hmm. that's in my roots. I like, I like doing things myself and, learning the hard way until I really started learning things the hard way in this laundromat. <laughs> and I started to see the value of this. And now I'm a, I'm a hard and fast believer that joining a program like yours, if I want to do, you know, rentals, and I want to learn it, it's going to help me not just go faster, but it's going to help me go farther also. And so programs like yours, if you think about getting into the rental stuff, jump into that program because you're going to go farther faster with that than if you try it on your own. And ultimately you're going to be much better off. Appreciate that. So I want to talk now about like acquiring a laundromat, Mm -hmm. right? So the first time when you work with the broker, uh, you know, if anybody who's ever done like commercial real estate or anything like that, he probably showed you the performa and they said, oh, you can make X amount of, of dollars or whatever. So taking those lessons on you know, uh, understanding the financials behind a laundromat, how did you go about finding your next one and, you know, build it from there? Yeah. So, so there's a couple of different ways to buy laundromats, right? It's same, same with real estate, actually, yep. right? You could buy like turnkey real estate. It's already, you're going to make your 200 bucks a door or I don't even know if that's possible anymore, but I mean, I, oh, I know it's possible, well, I, but I could be much more 500. Fun. I get four. Yeah, five hundred. Right. I'm in Cleveland though. <laughs> so, that's what I'm talking about though. Yeah, you got to find those markets, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's exactly it. Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, finding, uh, you know, finding those turnkey things, right. And yeah. you, you're going to value them one way, but then the other way is like, go find fixers. Right. And there, you know, for a laundromat, right. Maybe it's not making money right now, or maybe it's breaking even, maybe it's even losing some money. Um, so, so you, I, you'd approach them two different ways, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So if you've got like a fixer laundromat, you know, really you've got to figure out, okay, what's the potential of this laundromat? So you have to look at things like the size of the space and what, you know, equipment mix you can put in there and what equipment makes makes sense for uh, for the, the community it's in, what the demographics are, demographics made up, uh, make up so that you can you can determine like how much potential revenue there is in a particular, you know, radius from that laundromat. And then you got to do a competitive analysis to figure out, okay, who are the competitors and how can I compete with them uh, if at all possible. And then you've got your more turnkey laundromats where your valuation is going to be based on, on the net income of that laundromat. Right. And it's based on a multiple of the net income pretty common right now today is somewhere between four and a, and five and a half times the net income is what most laundromats are, are valued at. And so, you know, you're going to see, okay, well, what, how much, you know, how much income's coming in, how much are the expenses going out before loan payments and then apply the right multiple to it. Um, and that multiple just real quick is determined mostly by three main numbers. It's, the age and condition of the machines, the rent amount, and the number of years remaining on the lease. When it comes to equipment, you know, um, mm-hmm. I've gone to many large amounts in my life <laughs> as a kid growing up in Brooklyn. Uh, uh-huh. You know, I've seen large amounts with like look like old old school, you know, coin base push put sliding in. Uh, but they yeah. seem to be still active and working. But then you have the no, newer, nicer ones with the uh, the the credit card swipe. What do you really recommend? Do you recommend going with the high end um, <clears throat> credit card, or if it's functional, would you still keep the the Coinbase operated machines in? Yeah. So it it depends uh, a little bit. It depends on the laundromat and 
the the community that's in the demographics it serves. Um, if I'm in Brooklyn, though, I'm probably you know, if, if that mach- if those machines are 15 to 20 plus years old. I'm probably going to replace them because number one, they're going to give me less headache. They're not going to break down as much. Number two, the new equipment is much more uh, efficient in terms of utility usage and laundromats are heavy on utility, gas, electric, and water. And so they're much, so you're going to save money there. You can charge more with them. And then almost everywhere else you can pay with a card. And so it laundromats are, there's still a lot of holdouts on in the laundromats, that only accept coin, which is fine. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I think you open up uh, a different demographic when you accept card payments yeah. as well. And you can also do more things that that benefit your customers more, right? You can you can do things like do ten washes, get one free, or you know, just different incentives that you really can't do very easily with coin, you know, coin based yeah. uh, laundromats. So you can really serve your customers better when you have that option. So. Uh, but if, you know, I get in there and there's machines that are, you know, five, seven, eight years old, uh, I may not replace the machines, but you actually, all of the card payment systems are third party. So they don't come with the machines. So you can actually add those onto existing machines. Okay. And it could be a, uh, like both, it can have the coin operated or yeah. the car. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. So that's pretty- called hybrid, right? Hybrid model. Nice. Yep. Nice. Well, you, you talked about utilities and obviously being a larger man, I'm sure the water bill is high. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so water bill, you say gas, electric to operate the machines. Um, what mm-hmm. other expenses outside of labor? We, we talked a little bit about that. Is there any other like um, OPEX that, you know, a potential you know investor should should kind of think about if they're going into this business? Yeah, typically your three biggest expenses are going to be uh, rent, utilities, and uh, labor. So those are your big ones. After that, maintenance, depending on how old your equipment is, maintenance can get up there uh, as well. And insurance. I mean, insurance everywhere is getting more expensive. Mm. Maybe not Cleveland. I don't know. No, uh, it's expensive up there now. You, you got to join the program to find out. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's getting, it's getting expensive everywhere, right? Um, and in and laundromats are no exception there. Um, so those are, you know, those are some of the other main ones that there's, there's other stuff too, um, security, you know, that you want to have and internet costs and stuff like that. But your biggest ones are usually, uh, you know, the, the labor, the utilities and the rent. And then after that kind of maintenance and insurance would be the next two probably. Yeah. What about like location? Oh, go ahead. Real quick. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you real quick. I just want to say about utilities you know, utilities typically run around 15 to 20% of your revenue. Okay. And I really, you know, people talk about high utility bills a lot, but actually I don't mind high utility bills because usually that means, as long as you're pricing your stuff appropriately, usually that means you're doing good business, right? And I would sure. gladly pay more in utilities if if I'm only paying 20% of what I bring in to utilities, uh, I'll pay as much as, as I need to, if yeah. it just keeps going up like that. Right. So, so I wouldn't stress about high utility costs. It's part of this business. And as long as you're priced appropriately, uh, utility bills tend to usually only go up with more usage aside from price increases, which you should be keeping up with by raising your prices. Yeah. And, and going back to your point about upgrading equipment, because that um, I'm sure would probably help as well because it's a more efficient, washer yep. it's some you know yep. it's using less water less electricity less gas less yep. maintenance so yep. you know the initial investment to upgrade everything is pretty much going to help you month over month um yep. so that's cool what I, what i was going to ask you is um about location what what best practices can you point out about location because you know again i grew up in brooklyn i've, I've lived in atlanta now for 20 years i've had a washer and dryer in my house <laughs> for 20 years. So, you know, that whole city life is, is kind of different for me. I'm in, more in the suburbs now. So yep. is it, what, what areas do you uh, suggest to put uh, um, a large man in? What, what works best? Yeah. So I, I, I hate 
that most of my answers start with it depends, <laughs> but it does depend. But I try to at least tell you what it depends on here. So, so it depends. However, you know, you got to factor in the business model. So when people think laundromats, what we're normally thinking is a self-serve laundromat, right? And so mm-hmm. self-serve laundromats do well in a renter demographic or, you know, in some places, homeowner demographics where maybe like the homes are old and so they weren't built with washer dryer hookups and maybe some people have added them but the majority of homes don't but typically we're talking renter demographics for self-serve laundry however as i mentioned the service side of the business i mean listen nobody likes laundry nobody likes doing la- very few people actually like doing laundry and who wants to spend half their saturday washing all the kids clothes because we all know kids are filthy disgusting creatures right yes and nobody <laughs> yes nobody wants to no arguments anywhere around here right like nobody wants to spend half their saturday doing laundry and so that service side of the business is booming right now because pretty appealing to never have to do laundry ever again right and so uh but it's a different demographic than your self-serve laundry usually, right? Usually it's a little bit higher income. You've got some disposable income. You start to value some of your time more than money a little bit in some ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, maybe you're dual income, no kids, or maybe, you know, you're a high income earner or you're dual income with kids um, and you're just super busy uh, or you're just incredibly lazy and you don't want to do laundry, which I think is a great thing, uh, right? So. So the demographics are a little bit different where sometimes a really good mix is being on like one of those borders, right? Like Mm -hmm. you want to be right on the train track so that you can serve both sides of the tracks kind of thing, uh, metaphorically speaking, right? So you've got your self-serve customers who are going to come in and do the laundry because there's apartments or whatever. Um, But nearby is a, a neighborhood that's a little more affluent and maybe would like for somebody else to do their laundry so those are kind of like some general guidelines. One one thing that I say, like for self-serve laundromats, a good location is somewhere probably in a parking lot near a Dollar Tree, uh, fast food restaurants, right? Check cashing places. You know, they're all serving kind of a similar demographic. Walmarts, right? So they're all kind yeah. of sim- uh, serving similar demographics. So that's kind of like a little hack, little cheat code when you're looking for self-serve locations. Got you. And what would you say as far as if someone was looking for a laundromat, what, what's the best way to go about even finding one for sale? Yeah. And that right now is easier said than done uh, at the moment. Okay. Cause right now there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of interest. There's more buyer interest actually than I've ever seen before. I mean, I have, there's lots of people who've been in this industry a lot longer than me, but I've been in a decade and I think probably ever before uh, is a safe assumption. And, you know, we can, we can thank, you know, like Cody Sanchez and, you know, Brandon Schlichter from investment joy started, I think the coin collecting thing that everybody does now. And, you know, and I think it's a good thing actually. Um, But it's really attracted a whole lot of other people who've kind of had our eyes open to the, the potential of this business. Um, so finding one is, is tough. So, you know, most people, uh, you know, are going to do a search online and find something like biz, buy, sell, biz, quest, biz, Ben, biz, jungle. I don't know. Like they're all biz something, right? One of those sites that has laundromat listings on it and you can find deals there uh, for sure. People do find deals there. Uh, however, like I said, they're fewer and farther between. Usually those are the ones that have gotten passed over already. Mm -hmm. Um, so really the three best ways I do a ton of consulting coach. I just crossed over a thousand consulting calls not that long ago. Um, and so I done a ton of them and I, so I've seen what's worked and the three main things that are working right now, and they're not anything innovative or anything, but number one, it's Maybe going to that biz buy sell site and checking out the laundromats, but reaching out directly to the to the broker who's listing that laundromat and starting to build a relationship with them um, and as many of them as you can, because uh, your goal is to get those deals before they end up on those business sites. Uh, so that's one thing. Number two is direct mail. 
campaign and just mailing laundromats and just saying, Hey, I'm Jordan. I'm interested in buying a laundromat. Just want to see if you were interested in buying a laundromat. And I, you can actually download the actual letter that I use and that a lot of my clients use for free on the website. Um, yes. They're just a Word doc template, template or Google doc template. And then number three is going to the laundromats and doing the same thing. Basically. Hey, I'm Jordan. Nice to meet you. Uh, I've been you know, looking for a laundromat for sale. I saw yours here. It's awesome business. Any interest in selling it? Um, and door knocking essentially in real yeah. estate terms, right? And those three things are working right now. And the thing that all three of those have in common is they take more effort than surfing the internet in your underwear on the couch on a Thursday yeah. night. So- well, I mean, I, I used to do mailing campaigns for my rental properties, and I'm sure it's a whole lot less larger mats in your, you know, radius. Mm -hmm. So if you did have to do a mailing campaign, you know, if I can do hundreds of letters on my own, you can probably do what a dozen, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah. It's not that it's not that difficult to do that. So, but it does require you to, you know, take the initiative to to do it. You know, you can't just surf like you like you were saying. But what what about if someone said, hey, you know what? I don't want the hassle of trying to find one. Do people like build brand new laundromats? Is that a thing or is it too yeah. expensive? Oh, tell us about that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can definitely build a brand new laundromat. And actually, uh, I mean, this is this is an exclusive for you right now. Uh, but I've I've just uh, I've just put together a partnership. Uh, with the company where they help you find a laundromat um, a location and help you manage the whole, because it's a lot, right? It's a big process. If you're building a laundromat that wasn't there before, mm -hmm. there's a lot of infrastructure in building a laundromat location, right? You've got a lot of plumbing. You've got to bring in a bigger water line. You've got to bring in a bigger power line. You probably have a couple of different panels. You got to run plumbing internally. You've got to run electricity, electricity internally. So, I mean, you got to have machine layouts. You got to have thick enough concrete. You know, it gets really like a lot overwhelming um, pretty quickly if you don't have somebody to help you. But uh, with that said, there are plenty of people who, for their very first laundromat, they built a location out and are killing it. They're crushing it. Right. And there's a lot of perks to building it out. Like you can put it where you want it and you can lay it out exactly how you want to lay it out and you can design it exactly how you want to design it. You don't have to inherit that from somebody else and work around there. Sure. So yeah, definitely a lot of perks to that. But also, you know, when you build it out, it's a little bit longer to break even because uh, yeah. you've got to build it out and you got to ramp up the business because everybody who you need to come to your store to do laundry is currently doing their laundry somewhere else. So you've got to snap them out of that habit of wherever they're doing their laundry and get them to come to your place and then get them to stay. So some obstacles, but can be super lucrative as well if you get the right location. Right, right. So, you know, being that this is the Money Focus podcast and uh, people are making investments to make money, uh, talk, talk to us about, you know, like potential returns that, you know, you might see from one laundry per se, you know, out yeah. the gate. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing that I, that I think is very exciting about this business uh, is that probably 99% of America could replace their income with one to three laundromats. And I mean, the revenue you get from a laundromat can vary pretty wildly, right? You can get negative money uh, like I did for a long time, but you know, uh, but really like on the lower side, I mean, you can make 25 grand a year uh, net with smaller laundromats, or you can make $500,000 a year uh, with a bigger, higher performing laundromat. Um, so really, you know, when you're thinking about, when you think about it, it, it's helpful to think backwards, right? Like how much money do I want to, do I want to net? I mean, obviously we all want to net as much as possible, but right. how much do I need uh, to be able to net? And from there you can sort of back into a, evaluation kind of range for yourself. So for example, if I was like, I want to net a hundred thousand dollars, well, I can say, well, you know, based on like a five times multiple, I'm probably looking in the $500,000, you know, range, which is, you know, if I bought it all cash, it's a 20% return on my money. But if I use a loan, maybe it's 30 or 40% return on my money, which 
Uh, it's great. just tough to beat that, right? Yeah. Tough to beat that. Right. No, that no, that's great. Well, talk to us a little bit about your program and, you know, the benefits and how people can actually tap into it. Yeah. So, I mean, through doing, uh, you know, I'm, I'm almost 170 podcasts in. I've, like I said, I've done a thousand consulting calls. I've brokered laundromats. I've owned laundromats, you know, so I'm coming from a bunch of different angles um, on this. And I've been, you know, I've been doing a free webinar almost every single week for three years or something like that. And I've been collecting people's questions like, what do you need to know? What information are you missing? Um, so the program is, you know, it's it's built and designed to help people move from wherever they're at in the process. You know, anybody listening here is probably like, I don't own a laundromat. So how do we get from there to, you know, I did a poll one time on, hey, what's your goal for for owning a laundromat? How many would you like to own? And it was something like 97% of poll respondents were like 10 plus laundromats. So I was like, okay, well, that's great, but we've got to get like one first and there are different skill sets we need to learn and a process we need to go through to get from zero to 10 plus, right? And it's possible lots of people have done it, but it's a process. And so I started thinking about, okay, well, what is the process people need to go through? And so the program that I've sort of put together has a component of courses that, you know, that you go through based on what phase you're in. So we start with foundations uh, because really this process, and I, I think you might agree with this in, in real estate investing too. The process, yes, is about money and financial freedom, but just as much, if not more, it's about us and who we're becoming along this journey. Um, and so this foundations phase is about helping us be intentional about who we're becoming. Right. And so like you, you can't manage all of the, uh, all of the, the properties that you're managing if you haven't gone through the process of getting to where you're at right now. Like if you had, if you started from zero and you just said, okay, here's this whole portfolio, you're going to be struggling like crazy because you haven't right. become the kind of person who can manage that yet and have a, have a program that has confidence that you can help people succeed. Right. So as that foundations, then we want to go to acquisitions and, and helping people find those laundromats or find those locations and buy right the first time. I always say, if you buy right the first time, sky's the limit for you because your returns are so good. You just need a base hit deal. That's all you need. You need a, a 20% return on your money. It's a base hit deal yep. and sky's the limit for you. You can roll with that all day long. Right. Um, so acquisitions, then we go to optimization. We really want to take, you know, we're, we're a fragmented industry here, kind of a mom and pop industry. So there's always opportunity to optimize these businesses when you buy them. Um, so we want to go through that because if you start scaling before you optimize your business, you're going to scale all the problems that you never addressed as well. Right. So we want to address all the problems, optimize it. And then the, the next phase is the scale phase and it's, it's kind of two parts. So you can either scale through adding the services, wash, dry, fold, drop off laundry or pick up and delivery and, or through building a portfolio of multiple locations, right? So we want to help people move from, you know, I have nothing all the way to, I have a, a huge laundry center that does all the laundry for everybody and or multiple locations. Um, so that's, that's the essence of the program. And it, it comes with, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, because listen, man, being an entrepreneur, being a, an investor, it's a hard journey and it's a lonely journey. So having yeah. experts that can help guide you along the way as you're going through these steps is invaluable. And then we also put people in mastermind groups because it's lonely and it's hard. And um, when you have a, a group of three or four other people that you meet with on a regular cadence and are encouraging each other, are keeping each other accountable to taking the actions we say we're going to take and are problem solving together. Like do you, talk about going farther, faster, like recipe yeah. for success in my view. Yeah. You know, um, being an entrepreneur, uh, it's, it's definitely rewarding, but it can, can be lonely at times. Yeah. You know, my wife yeah. and I uh, are in this together. So fortunately I have someone I can always, you know, bounce off ideas with, but when you're going into it, you're you're doing things that most your probably most of your network can't even comprehend. They're like, man, why are you doing that? Just get a job. 
<laughs> why why yeah. are you working these long nights? Just go to bed, you know? And when you're building a business and you're setting up systems and processes, it's going to be a lot of work on the front end so that you can enjoy that time on the back end, so that you can scale, you know? So, you know, my show is really about illustrating the the good, the bad, and the ugly. But hopefully you could see that the, with hard work, the good would definitely shine through. And it sounds like your program is really about setting people up for success no matter what. Because like you said, the foundation, understanding who you are as a person, as an entrepreneur, like for me, for example, like uh, with my rental properties, I truly enjoy providing quality housing for people. You know, that's mm -hmm. at the core. That's why I'm able to self-manage my properties because when someone has a maintenance issue, I don't immediately think of, oh, I have to spend money. I think of, I need to protect my investment and protect my, my tenant, you know, mm -hmm. and that's important to me. And I've done the numbers to account for maintenance issues. So when maintenance issues come up, it's not a surprise. It's already accounted for in the numbers. The investment was sound. Now I'm in the people business. You see what I'm saying? So I, love I want, that. yeah, like I want people to understand that, like, this is a part of business. Like you mentioned the utility bills, the utility bill is high means, means you're serving more people, mm -hmm. you know, more and more people are happy with your service. They love coming into your laundromat, your machines work. You have a clean facility facility. You have great services. That's what it means. So I, I think that's great. I, yeah, I love that. And I love that that perspective that you're coming. And I come from the laundromat perspective in the same way. Like laundromats are one of the few places that people still gather in in their communities, right? Like mm -hmm. still getting together. And, and a lot of times laundromats are located in communities that need, uh, you know, need help and they need, mm -hmm. they need people to come in and in, instill value in those communities and to communicate, Hey, you're a valuable community here. And, yep. You know, unfortunately, I think our industry traditionally has not done a great job of that. We have a people think of laundromats; they think of these rundown, half the machines are broken, half the lights mm -hmm. work. You know, thing. And I think that that has been a huge disservice to our country, really, and to our communities that we're trying to serve. And so, one of the reasons I do what I do, yes, to help people achieve financial freedom. You know, yes, to help them achieve their goals, provide for their families and those things. But also I see what I do as an ex by extension, I'm helping to serve communities and transform communities and instill value in communities by helping people know how to run businesses that communicate value to their customers. You're worth investing in, right? And so I love that. You, I mean, you said people first. It's one of our core values is people first, then profits, well, tell us, tell the audience how we can stay in contact with you, contact you about your 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 services, listen to your podcast. Um, so shout out your social network, website. So the floor is yours. Sweet, man. Appreciate it. Well, um, so I'm Jordan. I'm with Laundromat Resource, laundromatresource.com, Laundromat Resource Podcast. We're Laundromat Resource on all the social platforms, YouTube, Instagram, all the, all the things, uh, there and, you know, head over to the website. My email is Jordan, J O R D A N like Michael Jordan, get confused with him a lot. People mix <laughs> us up, but it's our, I think it's our game. It's pretty similar. It's the money, uh, but joy and, and the money and the money and the good looks and you know, all the things really, we're pretty much the same person. Uh, but Jordan at laundromat resource.com, uh, is my email address. And, uh, yeah, if anything I can do for you or anybody in your audience, just uh, feel free to reach out. Great, great. And I'll, I'll make sure to include, you know, the contact information in the show notes. So, again, thank you so much, Jordan, for coming on the show, uh, educating us on the laundromat business. And I I'm, I might definitely have to get me a laundromat for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, if you do, you just let me know and I I'll will. look you up, man. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it connected. But thank you for having me on, man. S seriously, such an honor and uh, love what you're doing here and keep keep it up, man. All right. Thank you.